right. Uh, we are getting the ICICI bank numbers in just a while from now. So we'll await more details 3018 yeah. is the net profit that so the company a, has reported. So that is very slightly a few crore lower than what we were anticipating. Gross NPA has come in at okay, 4.72. Yeah. So while we've the got net the NPA gross NPA at 21,149 crores this quarter. So that's 21,149 crores. This compares to 15,857 crores in the previous quarter. So that is a huge jump which has come in for the gross NPAs. 21,149 is what they've reported. That's a 33% 30, 30, increase on a Q&Q &Q basis for the gross NPA this time round. In terms of the net NPA, we've got it at 9,907 crores. So that's what the net NPA has come in at. Um, that too compares to around 6759.29 crores. Uh, like uh, uh, Reema mentioned, it is the gross NPA on a ratio basis which has scaled up all the way to 5.2% and compare this to around 45 to 4.8% which was the whisper number which was doing the rounds for gross NPAs for ICICI Bank. So it's definitely a disappointment which has come in on the gross NPA as well as the net NPA. Gross NPA risen 33% Q on Q, net NPA up 46.6% Q on Q. NII has, yeah. NII has come in at 5,453. So that would be slightly better than what you were anticipating. So yeah, it beats you know, your really, it's not going to be about the NII this time. With the gross NPA above 5%, uh, I don't think anyone's going to care even if they reported an NII figure for growth of around 20 odd percent. The provisions should come up for you. It's coming at 2,844.05 crores. That's the provision figure which is coming for ICICI Bank this time. 2,844 crores is what the provision figure has come in at. Uh, so that's a growth of around 190% year on year. It's around a 200% increase in terms of the provisions on a sequential basis. And again, it is uh, definitely only going to be about the gross NPS. I'll just look up the other income because the gross, because despite higher provisions, the profit has come in at around a growth of around four and a half odd percent. So uh, the other income should come up as well. 4,216.88 crores, which compares to 1391.67 crores year on year. So that's really supported the bottom line this time round for ICICI Bank. Lata joins in as well uh, to uh, to take us through the numbers. Lata, it's um, disappointing, but more disappointing than anticipated. Yeah, I think this is a 30% rise yeah, almost 33%, uh, in yeah. the uh, GNPLs. Let's remember that uh, Axis Bank had an increase of 47% mm. in its gross NPL. So uh, we should have expected that uh, there will be a 30% uh, rise in the, uh, uh, I mean, uh, it, it should not come as a very major surprise. Actually, what people will have to now look, start looking at is how much of this is the restructured book. If it is the restructured assets uh, that have largely uh, gone into NPLs, then that be a little bit of a consolation but if it is uh, outside the uh, uh, restructured assets then this will be further cause for worry as well mm. uh, you know a great deal of detail will have to be known the NII coming in a, uh, a slightly uh, it's not even higher than expected isn't it it's 13.3 percent increase so the range was it's similar to what they did last quarter okay it's not this much. is uh, yeah, it's uh, you know unless it was percent. dramatically yeah. different yeah. where you can say that yeah. they have grown their way out of their problems uh, you know this will continue to be a huge worry if 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 the uh, NII growth and the profit growth had been outstanding, then perhaps this would put okay. the NI, uh, NPA figures a little into relief because you would think that, uh, okay, there is enough in terms of reserves to provide for this. Uh, the, okay. the profit Lata, is a little have, better but not uh, outstanding. Lata, we have more qualitative information where the increase in the non-performing assets as per the management press release was primarily due to a decline and continuing weakness in the global steel cycle and RBI's objective of early and conservative recognition of stress and provisioning, pursuant to which RBI has asked banks to review certain loans and the classification over the two Waters ending December 31st, 2015. The bank's net NPA as uh, the bank's provisioning coverage rate ratio stood at around 53.2% as of uh, December 2015. And uh, the net loans to companies whose facilities have been restructured were at 11,294 crores. This compares to around 1186, 8,000. Uh, 11,868 uh, crores as of the previous quarter. But remember, the details from the management are more comprehensive. But this is what they have mentioned in 
uh, they have mentioned in the press release. Yeah, this is a bit niggling. If the net loans, uh, if the restructured loans stands at 11,294 crores, mm. which is about 550 crores less than mm. what it was in the previous year. That means you can assume that these 550 crores have now moved into the GNPA bucket. Mm. That means yeah. the other 5,000 crores are fresh NPLs. Uh, because the NPLs have grown from what 15,000 to, to 21,000. 21, yeah, so so uh, that's about a 5,500 crore by way of uh, increase in uh, gross NPAs. Probably it looks from the face of it that about 500 crores has come from the deterioration of uh, restructured assets uh, into NPLs. The rest of it looks like other uh, assets which have been recognized as NPAs because of the inherent stress. And the stress could be in various ways. You know, it is a CDR done mm. where the promoter has not brought in promised equity. Or it is that the company has repeatedly found itself in the SMA2 bracket. Mm. Now, SMA2 are loans which are not paid for, for which interest is not paid for 60 days and more. If it is not paid for 30 days, it becomes SMA1. If it is not paid for 60 days, it becomes SMA2. So, if you're repeatedly an SMA2 uh, category loan, you are inherently in stress. You're not able to pay and therefore you are recognized as an NPL. There are also projects which have not started on time and which don't yeah. look like will ever start on time, mm. which are also being forced by the Reserve Bank to be classified as NPA, basically stress loans. So it looks like the 5,000 crore of extra bad loans, yeah. fresh GNPAs have come from that bucket. They are not necessarily earlier restructured loans which have uh, gone into uh, uh, NPA. So now actually what we should be counting is a GNPA of 20,000 crore, mm -hmm. 21,000 plus an 11,200 by way of uh, by restructured, restructured assets. assets. So that would look like the impaired or the stressed lot which is uh, considerable. Yeah. <laughs> which is uh, uh, a large amount of uh, assets. So I mean we, we, have, we still have to well, calculate how much that is by way of uh, percentage. Well an but important point also which I wanted to point out is that I think this quarter's numbers also includes 1243 crores on sale of the 4% shareholding in ICICI Prudential Life Insurance Company. So Lata we've been talking about that in terms of whether that could have been a variable which had supported the numbers this time. So I think that has come through and uh, that is in the summary which uh, is been provided by the company in terms of the press release at this point. But uh, we have a couple of reactions yeah, lined 4. up. 4.73 I guess if you add the stress assets then this hmm. works out to about 7%. So uh, that would be a bit of a worrisome number, 7 to 8 mm. percent. We also, I think the market before it reacts will also want to know what is the st uh, strategic debt restructuring number, yeah. what is 525. the 525 number. In any case, yeah, as you said, an expert is joining us, Gaurang Shah, the VP of Jyojit uh, uh, BNP Parva Financial Services is with us. Uh, uh, well, Gaurang, first thoughts? Well, a terrible disappointment and as you were just breaking up the numbers, uh, I think it is more prudent to hear the commentary from the management as to how they are going to, uh, you know, reinforce the confidence that uh, one had in uh, ICIC Bank uh, maybe about four or five quarters back because the last three quarters, if you recollect, uh, have been very disappointing and this one to add to it is just uh, adding fuel to the fire. Hmm. Uh, as a disclosure, we do have a positive coverage. Post this numbers, I think we'll just need to go back to our work tables and review our coverage or possibly lower the targets. Uh, my my essence would be to look into the commentary or hear the commentary of the management how they are going to straighten up these figures. Okay, well there's been a 20% growth in the domestic advances with 24% growth in retail advances this quarter. So that's just a key point to keep in mind. But uh, Gorang, uh, you know, uh, Axis Bank had a positive reaction post its numbers because of the more of the internal details that had come out from the management and for the street estimating that uh, the stress is not as bad as anticipated despite the asset quality review. Do you think that the same case could be applicable for ICICI Bank or is the PNL telling you something else? I think uh, it's a different uh, case altogether and uh, the point that Lata was also referring, if the net interest income was something above expectation then there would be some solace. But given the fact that your profits are down and your asset quality is deteriorated for worst, with added, um, uh, you know, numbers uh, coming into the GNPL, my sense is that uh, this is not going to go down well uh, tomorrow morning when we get back to the trade. Uh, possibly you might see the stock reacting negatively. Uh, okay. Like I said, you know, uh, one needs to just wait out for the commentary from the management because this case, I think uh, one needs to just hear mm -hmm. into the management as to how they are going to straighten out the 
Uh, yes, uh, uh, before I come to you for your price targets, uh, Gaurang, let me invite Prakash Diwan as well.